Brace yourself, folks. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the long, long Sasson album. Look at the cover. You know what you're in for, don't you? This is one of the most revolting, slimy, sickly <laughs> I mean, performances of Sasson, of anything by Sasson. It's not even mostly Sasson. Well, it's mostly Sasson, but there are two discs here. Um, let's start with the, the, the packaging and the presentation. We have to do that because there's a pattern. There's a pattern here. Remember, remember the guy from Iceland, Vikinger Olafsson, you know, every picture was this contorted thing with his hands like this. Remember him? Well, this is the flower. You've got the flower. See, here's the flower. And then we've got the other flower, he's sniffing the flower or licking the flower or doing something to the flower. And I mean, it's just endless flower things. That's the motive. And it seems to me the Deutsche Grammophon is doing this with all of its pianists. You get a, a photo essay, um, you know, and look, there's more, see, there's more. Everything you can do with the flower, it's kind of embarrassing. I mean, none of the things that you can do with the flower, isn't it? I mean, and then there's, then there's this. I mean, what does that mean? Um, one one hesitates to speculate. You know what I mean? So, oh my God, look! And then there, of course, is the hand stuff. I mean, you have to do the hand stuff because he plays the piano, which is a hand instrument. You know, unlike the, you know, left-handed sewer flute or the nose trombone or whatever else he could do. So. The blurb on the back. With this album, Long Long presents a treasure trove of musical discoveries. Whose discoveries? I mean, this is standard repertoire for the most part. It really is. Saint-Saëns Piano Concerto No. 2, recorded with a stellar cast. A cast! I mean, this is not a theatrical production. It doesn't have a cast. It has, it has people who play it, you know? But it, it's a stellar cast. The Gavond House Orchestra and Andres Nelsons. Those are his cast members. Who wrote this? I mean, who approves this stuff? Okay, is for La oh, the, the symphony. Wait a minute. The piano concerto, Sassol Piano Concerto Number 2, we have to do the complete sentence. Recorded with a stellar cast, the Gavond House Orchestra and Andres Nelsons is for Long Long a true romantic masterpiece that rivals the greats like Rachmaninoff or Tchaikovsky. Did we really need him to tell us this? I mean, it's a standard repertoire romantic piano concerto that's been right up there with the other ones for about like, oh, 150 years or so. Hmm? I mean, where has he been? I, I don't even get to the end of these sentences. They're so messed up. By pairing it with Carnival of the Animals, a whimsical menagerie that has captivated young hearts for generations, Long Long continues his heartfelt wish to promote the love of classical music to kids, and it also gives him a chance to collaborate with his wife, pianist Gina Alice. Complementing these works with hidden gems, unearthed solo compositions by five female French composers as well as beloved French classics, has created a feast for the years, promising a captivating experience. Well, it's more like a lacerating experience, frankly, but that's, that's something we'll talk about momentarily. So you see, it checks all the boxes. You've got the flowers. You've got his wife tucked in there somewhere. You've got... You've got children, kitties, running around, having a delightful time. And you've got the politically correct female composer angle. I mean, what more could you ask for? Right? It's got everything. It's one of those, one of those, those, those catch-all grab bag things that promises to combine everything and delivers absolutely nothing. Yes. So let's get to the performances, such as they are. Um, disc one, oh God, disc one <clears throat> begins with the Carnival of the Animals. Now, there are only 30 trillion performances of the Carnival of the Animals, and it's practically impossible to destroy. They manage. 
Boy, do they manage. They manage on several levels. First of all, it is the most poker-faced car carnival of the animals you've ever heard in your life. There's not a trace of humor or wit or, or perkiness or fun in, in anything. Everything is on a sort of monochrome, blah level of, 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 of workadayness. Um, the pianos are far too forwardly balanced. You, you, you hear like nothing else. Even the, the, the roaring of the lion doo, 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 with the strings. All you hear is the piano is going like that. That's what you hear. And so and so it goes. Let, let's see. Hens and chickens. Okay, well, you know, what are you going to do with that? Uh, jackasses. Wow. What a flat-faced performance of that for the two pianists. Um, and then we've got, let's see. Tortoises, oh, my God, yes, it, it, you think you're going to die before they get through it. It's just exaggeratedly boring. How do you exaggerate tedium? That's the question. Well, they figured it out. You play the piano part very softly, but because the orchestra is so far back and so poorly balanced, it's even further, further behind. It's like, it, 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 it's just, oh, it's horrible, absolutely horrible. Uh, the elephant. I mean, the waltz. It's a waltz, right? And the tune is in the bass, which is where the humor is. And it's the dance of the sylphs by Berlioz, which is supposed to be light and airy. It's very humorous and witty. I wonder if they even know that. Because all you hear is the pianist clanging away. Bomb, clank, clank. And somewhere underneath, there's a bass trying to be heard. I mean, it's just, it's just, it just gets worse and worse and worse as it goes. And pianists... Is, is the worst. Now, pianist is a very, very funny piece. It really is. It's, it's pianist practicing scales. And you can play it perfectly straight. Really, you can. And it's delicious. It's delightful just the way it is because it's nothing but scales. That's where the humor is. <clears throat> the humor is the repetition of these scale exercises that Sanson is mocking. Now, some performances try and make it clunkier. The pianists aren't very good. Occasionally they hit a wrong note here or there. They do that. But the less you do, the better it sounds. Well, well, Long Long and Alice go completely nuts on this thing. They don't even play what Sanson wrote. They really don't. They just keep going up and down the keyboard, kind of at random. It's all over the place. It's a complete mess. It, it, it destroys the humor. There is no humor in what they do. It just sounds like they're 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 lost in traffic somewhere. I don't know. It's it's horrendous. So we get through the carnival of the animals, which sucks beyond belief. And then and Andres Nelson's, by the way, is is, is a total non being in this production. He might as well not have showed up. He, he contributes zero. The orchestra sounds as bored and lifeless <laughs> as it's possible for them to do. And you hear it right away in the second piano concerto. My God. I mean, their entrance, first of all, they're, I mean, they're not in Leipzig or, or Long Long isn't in Leipzig. It's recorded in Berlin and the orchestra's playing in Leipzig. I don't know. They are far, far away, far away. And, it, you know, and, and Long Long's conception of the piece, such as it is, is just to bang his way through it. He has no subtlety, no wit, no point, no no nothing, nothing, nothing to contribute. It's it's it, it he pushes and pulls and futzes and it's it's it's, it's it, it makes you want to like you know scratch yourself or take a shower. It's 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 not clean. It really isn't. And, and the scherzo, the central movement of this concerto, one of the most delicious pieces ever written for piano and orchestra, especially the trio tune. I mean, it's just so wonderful. And at that moment, you should slow down a little bit like Arthur Rubinstein does, for example, and have a little swagger, right? But a little, I mean, it, these are subtleties. This is not, well, subtlety, forget subtlety. This guy understands subtlety like, you know, mm -hmm. hey, he's just bump, but a dump, bump, 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 but a dump, 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 dump. And it's so loud that when the cellos have the tune, da, 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 you don't even hear it. I mean, the notes get smeared. They're somewhere way, way, way back there. It's, it's horrible. It's just horrible. And the finale, the Tarant it's a Tarantella, 
that sort of thing. I mean, there's no ferocity in the string playing. The, the, the loud orchestral chords, bah! And they're supposed to come in. It's, I mean, they're nowhere. They have no presence at all. The orchestra, like I said, might as well not even be there. I mean, the recording of the piano is kind of glary and, and it, it's just, it's just abysmal. Absolutely abysmal. Now, that's the main program. On disc two, we have the politically correct program, which consists of the following. The most horrible pavan for a dead princess you've ever heard in your life. I mean, it has no, it's a pavan, it's a dance. It has no rhythm. He's pushing and pulling and slipping and sliding and schlumping and frumping. And, and, and it, it, you almost don't get a sense of melody. It's really, really bad. It reminds me of what Ravel said. You know, remember when Ravel wrote the piece in a pianist, you know, it became very popular to Ravel's great annoyance. And pianists played it all the time and made him listen to it and they played it badly. And, and he said, you know, a pianist sort of went, hey, what do you think of my performance of your pavan pour an enfant defunt? And, and Ravel wrote, j'ai écrit un, un pavan pour un enfant defunt, pas un defunt pavan pour un enfant. In other words, I wrote a pavan for a dead princess, not a dead pavan for a princess. Well, this is the, the pavan defunt pour un enfant, the dead pavan for a princess. Then we've got Debussy's Petite Suite with, with, with Gina Alice pops up again for that. Again, it, there's no anything here. I mean, it begins with En Bateau. Right, that beautiful piece. Da, 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 da. I can't do it. Never mind. The the point is, the point is you're you're in a boat on the waves, sort of trolling along. That's what it is. This is dead, deader than dead. It's 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 dead. It's 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 if death could die, this would be that dead. And the ballet at the end, it, it's just 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 it's just narcissistic. Slippy, slidey, slimy navel gazing. That's what it is. Then we've got some horrid transcriptions. Um, the foray in Paradisium from the Requiem and the the flower duet from Lacme, all of which are performed with this highly perfumed post Liberace sort of I mean, and that's not fair to Liberace, because Liberace was a fine pianist and a wonderful entertainer. These people are neither. They, they they don't play well. They they don't entertain. It it, it, it so there's it, they just muck with it. And then we get a virtuoso piece because you can't have nothing but you know limp noodle music, right? So we have the Toccata, um, which is the Saint Saint Etude, Opus One Eleven Number Six. It's the Toccata after the finale of the Egyptian Concerto, the Fifth Concerto. Now this Toccata has been played a billion times now. It's actually rather popular. You can find it on YouTube with a zillion pianists, most of whom do it much better than Long Long does. You know, it's it's a great piece. You can get, uh, there's a couple excellent recordings that have it. There's uh, Francois René Duchable, I believe, who did the um, Etudes on Erato, and there's Piers Lane on Hyperion, which is a wonderful disc. I, I have it on my phone. I listen to it all the time. So it, it's a terrific piece. It's exciting and it's fun. And, and you have to know where the melody is. And you have to be able to clarify the thickets of notes. Well, this is the most, it, it's, it's a horrifying mess. It's the most mindless run through. The very opening just sounds like he's like leaning on the keyboard. Like, rah, 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 rah. It's not, it's bump, 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 bump. You know, it, it, this thing has to have shape. You have to do something with the, the thickets of notes. And if you know the finale of the, of the Egyptian concerto, then, I, I mean, you already know how the music is supposed to go anyway. God forbid Long Long should play the Egyptian concerto. Wouldn't that have been different to not do the obvious thing that everybody in the universe does? I mean, what really fascinates me is the hypocrisy of this. I mean, in, you know, here's Long Long having discovered the Saint-Saëns Second Piano Concerto as though people shouldn't know it or don't know it, while at the, as one of the great romantic concertos, while, while at the same time in choosing the second concerto, he's doing the obvious thing. He's playing the piece everybody already knows and has already heard a billion times and ignoring the other f four piano concertos that Sansal wrote, which are wonderful. Um, you know, there's, there's, if you want to make a discovery, make a discovery.
right? Don't discover the obvious. That's insulting our intelligence. It really is. And the intelligence of everybody, even people who don't know this music, it's insulting their intelligence too. Because they're going to go away thinking, oh, look, he discovered this concerto. Ignoring the fact that there are 750 other recordings of it that are better. I mean, that's the dishonesty, you know? So we get that. Then we get the, 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 the Foray Pavan played sim seemingly on one finger. You just hear this. It always sounded like the Taster's Choice coffee commercial, but here it doesn't sound like that. I'll give him credit. It doesn't sound like anything. Okay, then we've got some, some, some ladies. The ladies are all sort of clumped at the bottom. There's a clump of women. So now we're at the female clump section. Um, Louise Pharynx, Etude number 10. Charlotte Sohe's Song Without Words, Opus 30, number 4. Germaine Taillefer's Vols, Lent, Lent, whatever you want to call it. And Mel Bonus's La Toute Petite Standort and Lily Boulanger's Du Jardin Claire. It's nice that he did this stuff, but there are a billion other people who've done it before him. I mean, these are not discoveries. Again, there's a point at which, you know, you can't just to a clump of women and say that they're discoveries. People have been working on this stuff now for the better part of a decade. And wonderful recordings have come out dedicated to just these composers, Ty Affair, Mel Bonus, Charlotte Sohe just had a two disc or four disc collection. Yeah, it was four discs that I reviewed. You know, it was, you know, on Bruzan, you know, the Bruzan label and all that stuff. There's, Compositrice, that big collection of French lady composers. There are all these very fine female pianists, better than Long Long, I will say, who are recording this music. I, it's not a discovery anymore. I mean, I think I think when Long Long wakes up in the morning, it's a discovery. He's still there. You know, I mean, what what is there being discovered? It's 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 on a major label. Deutsche Grammophon discovered it. Ah, you know, that's one of the things that major labels do. You know, they ignore the rest of the musical world. They pretend that until they do something, it's never been done. And and that's the biggest lie of all. And for a lot of people, that's true because they have the distribution. You know, they have the clout. And so people think, oh, look, and this major artist is making a discovery. Well, he's not so major. I mean, I guess he is in China. I don't know. I don't know. I've defended him. I defended him many times because I think that he, he was given short shrift because of his populist angle. And you know from Yuja Wang and from Long Long and these people, I like that. I don't have any problem with the populist approach, the populist appeal, as long as the musical results are first class. That's what matters. So anyway, this abomination ends with the swan, which we already heard horribly done. Well, not horribly done, but boringly done in Carnival of the Animals. And and it's boringly done here, only with more rubato. Oh, it's just, it, it's, 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 it's a swan going through a wormhole. It kind of, I don't know. You know, you know there, there, there is a, a bagel shop across the street from where I work. It's called La Bagel Delight. I don't know where the law came from. I never knew that bagel was a feminine noun in French, but it's called La Bagel Delight. And it's about as French as a bagel. I mean, it's a bagel shop. And they thought possibly that that putting the la in front of it and giving it a Frenchified thing somehow makes it classier. I mean, if it's a food thing, you have to have a French thing in front of it. If it's verbal and and like a commercial, you have a British voice because that makes it classier, theoretically. You know, so you've got like British accents, French grammar, because there's no way, frankly, that British anything is going to make food appealing. I mean, that's another subject, isn't it? But La Bagel Delight is about as French as this is. And I'm not talking about it, you know, he's, he's Chinese and so he can't do French. It has nothing to do with that. He can't do French because he's just not very good and because he doesn't have the taste and he doesn't understand the idiom and he hasn't been paying attention because none of this stuff is inherent. This can all be learned. It all gets fed into you, you know, when you're a student and you play the music, you play it regularly, you get a sense of it, you listen to other great people play it, you know what the parameters of interpretation is, you understand what the French school of piano playing may have been, you may emulate it, you may not emulate it, but at least you know what you're doing. And this is just a 
completely witless run through that is as, as well, it's as narcissistic as a guy who runs around spending his time sniffing daffodils. That's not a daffodil. It's like a lily or something. But whatever the hell that is, it, it, it's a complete narcissistic, oily, oleaginous, revolting, repulsive uh, disaster. Really, a shame. It's a shame because Long Long has talent. He could do this. You know, if he really cares that much about kids, do a great performance of the Carnival of the Animals. If he cares about discovering this stuff, play it as though it's a discovery, not as though, it, you know, it's just it's just a, a, an abstract exercise in in in, in pianistic non-being. I, I I can't describe it any other way. It sucks. It sucks. It sucks. Bye. Oops. There it went. And there I go. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.